<laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Hi guys, it's been a long time. Um, Y'all can keep talking. I'm just gonna talk to these guys right here real quick. Um, so I don't know if this is working now. Oh yeah, it's working because people are joining. Okay, so um, it's been a long time since we've been here. Um, usually we do Nomad Connection every other week. But we were, oh, thank you. But we were on a break, vacation, lots of traveling. So I'll let them kind of tell you a little bit about it. But we were on our break, and so now we're back. Um, which it's kind of a sucky first topic to start off with is like depression. Woo, let's go for it. But we're going to be talking about domestic violence today as it pertains to. Um, well, South America. Ah, oh, thanks. So, um, first I'm going to turn you around so you can see the rest of the nomads, or at least some of the nomads that are here, because we're not all here today, but I'm going to turn around so you can see them, and we can just start chatting about where we've been, what we've been doing. I can officially see you guys, just so you know. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, so there was a lot of traveling. Who did what? Where? What happened? Yeah, don't jump right. all in at once, guys. <laughs> Take your time. No, let's do the round. Okay, we're gonna. Chris? That make me first. That <laughs> makes you first. Awesome. Um, when, was I, when, when was our last time? <laughs> What's my name? Yeah, yeah, December. Yeah, December and January. Yeah, December and January. Wow. So, yeah, well, I spent, when I spent all of December, more or less, traveling on the coast, on the Caribbean coast, um, old, as far off as like we're here there. I spent Christmas in Nawusimake in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, um, which was really nice. Uh, <laughs> Our energy level is crap today, yeah. just to just let you know. Yeah. We're, we're usually way more energetic and a lot more people, and but we're a, we're a little we're a little sluggish today. No, he's not abused. We take care of Chris very well. <laughs> Somebody was like, "Yeah, that guy's definitely being abused." I'm like, "No, no." I think we take care of Chris very I'll well. I'll <laughs> um, and then in January I went to, it was, it was my birthday, um, and then I went to uh, Guinea on the Venezuelan border in the jungle, in the east of the country. Fabulous. Which was the setting of Colombia's Oscar-nominated film. Mm -hmm. For anybody yes. who wants to watch a good wow. Colombian film, it was Oscar. Everyone, can you go ahead and say the name? Oh, it's called The Embrace of the Serpent. Yes. So. Vote for it if you're in the academy. I don't know if we have any. Academy <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. You, know. You, you don't. You don't know. There are four They're people on. All four of them could actually be a part of the academy. Who knows? Who knows? Jen. Hi. Um, well, Rebecca and I went traveling like around Christmas time. And we went to the Desert de la Tatacoa. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then we went to... To Nate. Cali! To Cali. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly is a crowd favorite. Yeah. <laughs> For the feria, so it was just like heaps of self <laughs> and rumba and very nice. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Pianguita, mm -hmm. a random fucking island where I got stung by a I was going to say, and then you almost died. <laughs> <laughs> no almost big died. deal. A little detail. No big deal. <laughs> almost oh, died. Well, it's really super small now. Die. Yeah, it's covered what? anyway. Yeah, she. Li oh, we didn't tell you about that. Yeah, she totally almost died. No yeah. big deal. <laughs> Just but I'm here with Rebecca and a nice local man who made a coconut fire <laughs> and squeezed the venom from my foot. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then I went to Pasto, and then I went to the jungle, and. Then I came here to the hospital to fix it. <laughs> so that she didn't have to amputate her foot. Right. And that delay between the foot happening in the hospital is why she all Right. <laughs> in case anybody was. I'm holding right. my leg. I'm just going to travel for two or three more. Weeks. Right. In there is an actual hole in my actual foot, and what I'm going to do to make it better is walk around in a jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Infection <laughs> central. Why not? So what now? Does the hole happen immediately? And um, no, it happened. It got worse. Why? Why did it get but worse? She just didn't give a shit, and she was like, "Oh no, 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 no. let's dance." <laughs> but I'm alive, and it's healing slowly but surely. <laughs> Oh, so basically the role of this is feel. don't yeah. it is a good story, but don't do as she does. Okay, great. I went to Cali. 
<laughs> for a wedding. And it looked like prom. <laughs> uh, went to Salento, which is absolutely beautiful. Everyone should go. Salento. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. Then went to the U.S. to visit my family. Then went to Miami to see some friends. And then came back. <laughs> and went Just like that. Hi, Mauricio. <laughs> Okay. It has been a long time. Um, well, I did more All the than things exactly the same minus the thing. <laughs> minus the thing. <laughs> but I also went to the Desierto de Tatacoa and I also went to Cali, which was awesome for the feria. Um, and then I went to Peru to, to see my dad and to travel around Peru, like the south of Peru with my dad. For two weeks and then I brought him here to Colombia. <laughs> And he stayed one and a half weeks with me in my apartment here in Colombia, which was definitely too much time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Kelly is great for dancing, and that's you have the right audience, my friend. <laughs> he remembers that we like dancing. Yes. Everybody say hi to Mauricio. He follows us. Hello, hi, Mauricio. Why not? Well, um, yeah, and that was basically it. And I started a new job. In January. Woohoo! So mm. Yay for checks that pay. Working population. Mm. Real adults. Wow, okay, so what I was doing. Everything <laughs> started in December. So I was in Mexico for Christmas holidays and also New Year. And after that, I came just for back to Bogota probably for three days. Five seconds, yeah. And then I went to Medellin for the weekend. And then I arrived on Monday and I went to San Francisco also for like four days. Which and I came back. back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I and over. I came back and, I, and I, we had this problem at the office because we wanted to send some uh, a guy to Honduras, to so San Pedro Sula, mm -hmm. one of the, the top two most violent city in the world. So yeah. like that. And they, this guy uh, didn't have the yellow fever vaccine. Uh, and he found out like at the, at the plane because he didn't allow him to get in the plane. So I had to go instead of him. <laughs> really? And I was there in San Pedro Sula for, like, <laughs> for four days. But it was very nice. I was like um, researching the, the, nice, the, the nice violent town. was quite nice, no, actually. I mean, that's also what I really like because um, even though everybody was like, come on, no, you have to be super careful because there are some kidnappings right? wow, from indeed. the airport. But I felt like really safe in a way. Like, I don't know where I was, but well, I feel safe. And I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. So I wish you guys could see the face that I just gave people. I'm like, I don't understand how she feels safe. But. Yeah, because it's not like, I mean, it's all about getting knowing where you don't have to get in. Right. right. Like with kind of neighborhood. So, yeah, so after that traveling, I finally came back to Bogota. So that was like two weeks ago, probably. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um... Did anyone say? Nobody said they hated Colombia. We didn't say that. Did, did, nobody said that. Um, quite the opposite. We love Definitely. Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this girl right here has to leave in two days. and She's, she's not, not happy. At all. We we I don't know. It says why you hate Colombia. And I was like, we, we don't. No, we, we were just quite... talking about mm -hmm. what we did on our holidays. But we are all like... <laughs> We yeah, we quite us. like, we actually all had an option to leave recently, yeah. and we all decided to stay. So, well, all of us, except for one person. <laughs> Hi! Uh, what to yeah, great. I am the nomad who doesn't do anything nomadic. I just know all the nomads, because all I did was go back to the U.S. I mean, that's still nomadic. You left the country. Yeah. Uh, I'm well, thank you. Hi, Paris. Um... Yeah, so. Person, Paris, the no, just the city. Oh, okay. I, well, I think. Is your name Paris? I don't. <laughs> I think. I think it's just the city. Um, it said from Paris, so I'm, I'm pretty certain from the city. Um, so, yeah, I guess I mean, guess nomad ish. I don't. Of I went home, I visited the fam, which is cool. And then I came back and I brought them all back. Well, not all of them, but three of them. So, um, there's that. Um, so, ah, okay. Well, welcome back. My sisters are great. Thank you for asking. Um, so I'm going to turn it back around so it's not just me because I don't know the rest of the people. Great. So this lovely lady right here in this corner, wait, do you see me circling? Great. Right here in this corner right here. Um, Jen, this is her last nomad appearance for a while. We're going to say for a while, question mark? Yeah, it could be for a while. <laughs> she will be returning back to Australia in like 48 hours ish can we not do hours oh, jesus oh christ i wasn't ready for hours <laughs> <laughs> so the 
this is her farewell, which kind of sucks a lot, a bit. But um, she is going to kind of push us in the direction of conversation because you see how awesomely energetic we are. Yes. Apparently, we're terrible actors. Um, so. Um, Huh? What happened? Did they call us out? No. No. Um, I'm supposed to say... I'm, oh, thank you for all the hearts. I'm supposed to say good day, mate. Um, good day. I don't look like that, but thanks. <laughs> Aussie. Tell so, um, so, for... Um, it is Valentine's Day in the good old U.S. of A., which kind of sucks that we're going to talk about domestic <laughs> violence on the day that we talk about love. Or is it a good segue? I don't really know. I think it's a good segue. It's a good segue. I thought it was a good segue. It was really good and depressing, but it was a good segue, I thought. So why don't you start us off? Sure. Question mark. Okay. Period. Well, yeah, I guess it's a bit of like a sad topic to be, to be leading on, but... Um, well, the reason I wanted to do this topic is because I wrote my thesis on, on domestic violence in Colombia um, and more specifically like the effect between the armed conflict in Colombia and how that affects the rate of domestic violence here. But I feel like um, domestic violence is in no way a Colombian issue. It's a complete world issue and, and world over. It's a complete taboo. It has a lot of stigma. It's called like the invisible crime. And it's very difficult to get real statistics because... I mean, the majority of domestic violence cases are left unreported. So, I mean, for that reason, I think it's a it's a good thing to talk about because like, you're bringing something out into the open which really needs to be discussed, which is barely ever discussed. And maybe it's good on Valentine's Day because we, I don't know, it's a day about relationships and about love, but there are a lot of people stuck in, in abusive relationships and they have, well, no way of escape um, and there's no services available to them. So that's why we're talking about that today. <laughs> um, so any information I have is just based on my own research that I've done, so it doesn't mean that it's like the be all and end all of domestic violence information. But Colombia has been voted the second highest, um, has the second highest level of domestic violence in Latin America after Peru, which has the highest level. Um, and yeah, the like domestic and viol domestic violence or like interpartner violence, yeah, basically is talking about physical abuse, but can also include emotional and psychological abuse. But usually, when we talk about statistics at the moment, that's not included. Mm -hmm. They're just talking about the physical side. So yeah, it's also interesting to think about maybe if we need to change the definition because just because the violence might not be physical doesn't mean that you're not stuck in like an abusive mm -hmm. circumstance. Um, so yeah, basically the what I discovered or what I learned about Colombia is that because yes, it is shocking that it's the second place. Continue. It's also the second highest place for acid attacks on women in the world after India. Second highest for acid attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. So I mean, there's a lot of reasons why Colombia has like very high levels of domestic violence. One, because we've spoken about it before, but the culture of machismo is very strong. And the other reason I think from my research is um, because it's been an armed conflict for over 40 years, just violence in general has become normalized. Yeah. And if there's violence on the outside, violence infiltrates the home. Um, so, and it's also like down the bottom of the priority list. If there's like child soldiers, if there's war, there's drug trafficking, no one cares if a wife is getting beat up by her husband. That's, I mean, no one has time to care about that, but that's going on all the time. Um, and you also have to think about like men who've been tra traumatized by conflict or mm -hmm. being involved in the conflict. A lot of the time turn to alcohol. Hi, France. Or are like psychologically traumatized and then that they then take out on their family because they think this is like their safe place. This is normal too. It's, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the basis of domestic violence in Colombia. I'm glad you asked that, Mauricio. We are going to do a comparison as well in just a moment. Yeah. He asked specifically about Australia though. Cool. 
Um, yep, domestic violence is super prominent in Australia as well. There is a non a non government organization called Counting Dead Women, which sounds awful terrible because it is. But it's like a Facebook profile which is set up and it runs a count of women who have been killed by their partners. And I couldn't find it today, but the last time I saw it, it was at like eighty something of just women who've been killed this year by their partners mm -hmm. in, in domestic. Two thousand sixteen. Um, no, two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Um, so, um, it's definitely still a problem and recently the Australian government, or I'm not sure if this was just in Sydney or like nationwide, but they cut all funding to domestic um, violence services for women. I'm not really sure women. what you're asking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not really sure what you're saying. Um, okay. Machismo works both ways in Colombia. Sorry. I'm reading as you type this so that everyone else can respond. So please keep typing. I can see the name that was just there, but please keep typing. Um, he did say he wouldn't, he lived in the U.S. Uh -huh. for a while, but he wouldn't try to, uh, Julian, sorry, thank you. So Julian is saying he lived in the U.S. for a while. He wouldn't want to analyze the U.S. And he said that machismo goes both ways in Colombia. Please keep talking. We will keep talking as well, but I will also what, keep what feeding. Both ways? What, yes. Sorry, what, he lives in Florida currently, I'm assuming. What do you mean by both ways is the question that's being asked. Machismo works both ways. Can you please clarify that? Uh, okay. What do you think he means? Uh, yeah, because, for example, um, I think Colombian culture and Mexican culture are very similar in that way. So um, machismo sometimes is like motivated or yeah, like taking this male role, mm -hmm. but also it's pushed by women. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's both sense in the sense that it's not just guys who are kind of promoting no, no. it, but it's also women who I mean, make based it on what the expectation of what being a man is supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, one, 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 one. Julian is saying, yeah. Julian is agreeing with you, so yeah. apparently you're saying what he's saying. Um, I right? totally agree with Julian. I never said machismo came from men. I mean, yeah. machismo comes from women. I actually believe basically every To man be honest, man. that's kind of... It, that we, I guess my mom has always said you, you teach people how to treat you. So exactly. as a woman, if you tell people that this is acceptable, this is acceptable. Yeah. I mean, I think probably every man and woman on the earth has a bit of machismo inside of them. It's mm -hmm. your job to, to recognize that and, and work on it and unlearn it. I mean, I know I also have it in me in part because that's what you learn. That's the environment you grow up in. And until you realize like that's, you not have cool. clear expectations or ideas of what you think yeah, it is. Yeah, you have to change it. So it's definitely not just coming from men. I think that idea of machismo as well is interesting because that has a strong impact on the obviously relatively much fewer cases of domestic abuse that go the other way around. Uh -huh. Obviously it's a much less prevalent problem, but mm -hmm. it's something that's also basically unreported ever uh -huh. because it's really not masculine yeah. to be abused mm -hmm. by a woman in that stereotypical sense. Uh -huh. So obviously, like I said, it's a much much tinier issue than the other way around but i think that is the thing there's certain taboos when you're a guy especially machista machismo society that's not supposed to happen to you yeah. do you know what i mean so i think it's it just nobody benefits from it really that's the point i'm trying to make really is that that kind of stereotypical idea of what constitutes a man or what constitutes a woman pretty much benefits no one nobody. it's one of the reasons that say maybe uh, it's a super depressing Thank topic that say Suicide is the most common killer amongst young men. And part of that is just that it's just not, it's taboo in so many cultures to express emotion uh -huh. mm. as a man. So people so just don't, they bottle yeah. it up inside. It's not something, you don't go around to your male friends and just have a good crying and session. Have a crying yeah. You don't do it, you don't do it, you internalize it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's just, yeah, and that cheese mode thing doesn't really benefit anybody, does it? No. I mean, if, if you want to have like a healthy, functioning, balanced relationship, the two of you need to not have that entrenched. In you. I mean, it doesn't help the man and it doesn't help the woman. Mm -hmm. So it helps the world if we get rid of this this yeah. culture. So yeah. what what do you, since he asked specifically about Australia, and we'll kind of talk about it as a group as it pertains to where we were or where we're from. But as it pertains to Australia, you said it was it was big, and you mentioned the group. I can't remember the name of the group. And counting dead women. Right. That. Why don't I remember the name of that group? That's pretty harsh yeah. um but what what is your experience in terms of what do you see in terms of in australia yeah i see that it's absolutely the bottom of the priority list again because as i was saying the government cut off all domestic violence services and don't know if that's in sydney but anyway this happened like last year and they just combined what used to be women's shelters with homeless people's shelters 
mm. which makes no sense. You cannot have abused men mm -mm. with like drunk on abused women with drunk homeless men in the same shelter. Like this is not uh, the same function. And it's super dangerous. Not let's just say it's not drunk homeless men, right. but there's um, it's okay. Come, we'll, we'll come back. Um, he was like, sorry, I got lost or he was away. Um, but I, I feel like it's, it's dangerous. Even let's just say that they're, um, not drunk or they're not, I guess, necessarily otherwise dangerous, but women who are abused act and act out in different ways. Like they, they respond to their abuse in different ways. And so it's also a different disease. Right. So yeah. Requires yeah. different treatment. Totally you can't easy. just say yeah. diabetes, like, like, cancer, yeah. same machine. You know, it's, <laughs> a different, yeah. it's, a, it's a different disease. It's Broken like, leg. You can't just stick everybody in and go. Oh, you're a sort of doctor slash counselor. You can deal with all brackets yeah. of yeah. you know damaged people. Exactly. It requires an entirely different solution. England, we have the same sort of thing, I guess. Yeah. I don't know the statistics, but I mean, the rampant cuts being made to our national health service and social welfare mm -hmm. certainly i can't speak on authority but it, i can imagine it definitely hasn't helped us in that situation because they're closing down day centers you know doctors being laid off and hours being stretched so yeah i imagine and i think what really upsets me about that in particular is what what are you telling people who are being abused yeah like if you fine. say i'm going to cut funding that would help you uh, what what are you really saying culturally our women would actually idealize a man as a dominant provider, as a statement that's being said. So that's the internalization yeah. of what you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. But I, I think, well, I think that it's also promoted by, at least in Latin America, by, by religion, by Catholicism, because it, before it was like, no, come on, you cannot get divorced because it's like this uh, ideal situation around getting in a, getting married. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, and it's also, I mean, in these societies that people really care about what other people would say about you, mm -hmm. then it's like, no, I don't want to get divorced because they try to, yeah, so I can imagine where there's a lot of women <coughs> just uh, staying there instead of uh, doing something because uh, it's and like also, a lot of social like, pressure as well. As well so. I, I, what about like familial pressure? Because I feel like that would be a thing too, right? So if you go back to, not now, I don't know, like the 1950s, there were it, it also in the U.S. was not acceptable. Divorce was not a thing mm -hmm. that happened. Women learned to just take whatever the abuse is. So then those women passed down that I advice. Like, this is what you do to get through it. This is instead of saying leave because no one ever told them to leave. Yeah. They repeat the same cycle. Yeah. And even here in Colombia, I have this, my housemate, she's from Colombia. She was saying like, I have a group of friends, we are 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of them uh, are married, so she's the only one single, and they are like 35 years old. Mm -hmm. And she's the one like saying like, come on, you have to leave this guy, like if he's treating you so bad. Mm -hmm. And everybody, and the well, rest of the girls right? are, are just like, what? No, come on, you cannot say that. Like that's why, that's the reason of why you are alone, and we are all married, not ah. you, so imagine, so it's like. So yeah. you're alone because you refuse yeah, to accept refuse abuse to accept, or yeah, whatever. Like, what were you about to say, Lauren? Picky, picky. Oh, right. <laughs> Gosh, you want him to not hit you? What up? It's really sad to like make light of, but we've got to do something. This is. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What were you gonna say, darling? I don't remember. Okay, great. Sorry about that. It was fleeting. I remember a conversation we had. I think it was us three uh -huh. about um, our childhood, and you two were saying, I guess, "Yeah, that's like completely normal that like when when we were younger." Like, we were, like, hit by our parents. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> because, like, in my case, it's absolutely not acceptable <laughs> to hit, like, either your child or your teenager or whatever, or your, your wife or your husband. Whatever. So I was quite, like, surprised by, like, I don't know, your, your opinion on that. Because, like, for you, it was also like, yeah, well... Like my my dad like hit like, me when I was younger, so to me it's like da -da -da -da, alarm 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 like this is absolutely not acceptable. I feel oh, like I brought you guys this is happening in Colombia. Oh, 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 I'm I'm so, so, yeah. so I feel like that's a little bit better, right? Like oh, yeah. we're gonna talk about sad things. Hola Madrid. Hello from Madrid. Hi Madrid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
I don't know. Thank you, Jimmy. You are welcome. I don't know. We're, we're over here, we're talking, Chris just asked me, he's like, what do you mean? He, do you mean spank? Yeah. And, I, know, I mean, I don't spank. Right. So, he's like, so, and, I and for me, there's like a difference between like hitting a child yeah, yeah. and spanking a child. And I understand like for you, you're like completely hi. like, hi, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, but for you, you're like, what? I, I don't understand the idea, but to me, there's a difference between, yeah. oh yeah, she hits him. Versus, ah, he got a spanking. You're like, yeah. It's true. But Good. You see, like, <laughs> in our vocabulary, I mean, I, like, for me, hit is this, and spank mm -hmm. is like, yeah. I just spank mm -hmm. my child. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. So, but even the fact that all of us, because for us, this is like normal, like, you discipline your child by smacking them, then this is like, we normalize the vocabulary. So for us, it's like completely normal mm -hmm. that your dad would spank you or your mom when you do something naughty. And that that's fine, but... No, you, it's not. Yeah, but you can see for us, it's not like, that, like, I don't think mm -hmm. it's a problem either. I, I do, actually. I mean, my dad, my dad didn't throw it. Yeah, but I mean, if we talk about something. domestic violence, this is like... No, I, I, we're, not, we're not saying you know, that you're not wrong for No, 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 but just like to make this clear, I mean, the term domestic violence is the violence that happens yeah. inside home. your home. So, if you're spanking your child, you're also <laughs> like... No. Domestic violence. I strongly disagree with that. My yeah. dad is not a domestic yeah. abuser. My dad's a calm, sweet, loving guy, but sometimes I was a little shit. No. <laughs> exactly he didn't do it every know. time. I didn't knock over a vase and get whacked. Yeah. But if I just was not shutting the fuck up or not being a, not being just a decent job, because kids are a ton, man. It's very easy to be 28 now and go, I would never, <laughs> never lay a hand on my child. And then you've got two kids screaming, shouting, pushing stuff over, being actually pain in the ass. And it's not like you wail on me, do you know what I mean? But sometimes... It was an attention grabber. Oh, yeah, and that's exactly, the thing. Yeah. I'd turn that all right. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, yeah. This guy is saying that in Spain, the domestic violence is something very stigmatized. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we can, ch we can channel that back yeah. to mm -hmm. domestic violence, or back to... I mean, we're, we're when it happens, it's about. always on the news. Um, but no, I work with four and five year olds. They need strict punishment, and I think a nice spanking would help them dearly. Because now the spanking and the punishment is stigmatized. You can't do anything. It's all you can, in the U.S. Law. You can't and do anything out of. Control. Oh, no, Thank people, you. People get the police called on them so for spanking their kid in a sense. So so and I'm not opinion, whacking them, but just being like. Yeah. Stop. You know, nothing's hard. I think it's going to do No, actually, there's a difference between a beating yeah. and between a spanking. It, it hurts like, two seconds and you're a kid. You forget about it. But it's, it's, it's to get your attention. Yeah. So, now, granted, at, at whatever age I was getting spanked, hey, mom, um, at every, <laughs> whatever age I was getting spanked, she wasn't cool. But, <laughs> but now, like, if you're at a point, too, where you're like, like, for example, you said, yeah, kids, like, kids are completely out of control. But uh, I also mm -hmm. think that 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 was about getting your attention and and for the kids that i know who aren't disciplined sometimes a timeout is warranted like i think people assume that a spanking is just the first go to yeah. it's not my mom would tell me hey listen sit down mhm mm got it and 5 minutes i said sit down and then 5 minutes would go back sit to the last down like it wasn't like the immediate like I told you to sit down pop. It wasn't that. It's it's an escalation thing. But the point is is to show that there is a consequence. And for children, things have to be immediate. Because children don't understand a month later you're still on punishment. They're five. They don't get that. But like my mom will always say that she remembers when Tracy was younger, mom didn't believe in like removing things off the table. Like if she said, don't do this, you just don't do it. And you're gonna learn to not do it. I'm not, basically she was like, I'm not baby proofing the home because I don't want you to touch these things. Mm -hmm. If there's glass on the table and I tell you not to touch the glass, you're not gonna touch the glass. And however I need to make sure that you understand that you're not supposed to touch the glass is what I'll do. I told you no, I'm gonna move your hand. I told you no, I'm gonna move your hand again. Clearly, you're not listening to me. So I told you no, I'm going to pop your hand, and I'm going to tell you no again, and then you're going to get it. And at two, even though she, well, younger than two, she's in a walker, she didn't touch anything. We don't, we didn't pull anything off tables. We didn't change the way that our house was because the way that we were raised was to follow instructions. So if you pop them at five and you get their attention, at 13, you don't have to bail them out. 
of jail <laughs> or or you're less likely rather to bail them out of jail or wherever else it is because they don't know the idea of consequence and then you want to teach them a consequence at 16 i think it becomes a big problem is well it's what you exactly were using when it becomes the when it's the first action taken by the parent upon any slight or annoyance or that's when you you train your child to associate a parent with violence or to associate mm -hmm. life with violence or just whatever they do. Mm -hmm. It's what you said, it's one of the things where my parents very rarely spank me, but on occasion, he's, I can look back now and be like, yeah, there's a couple of times I totally deserved. There are a couple of times I didn't, I probably deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, the thing that's interesting for me is I'm not saying, like, never, I don't know. You need to discipline children, I think there's different ways of doing it. I don't actually think you need to make spank child ever to discipline them. But the fact that we have this euphemistic language like for a spanking. Spanking, yeah. this is like cool. But like one grade up, a parent who thinks it's cool to spank but maybe does it like as a first instinct all the time, that's kind of something else. So maybe when we think of domestic violence, mm -hmm. if it's also so normalized, like you say with your friends and they're like, mm -hmm. Go, don't leave your husband. It's kind of the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, but he just hits me sometimes. Like, I didn't have dinner ready, so, like, I deserved it. No, you didn't deserve it. Yeah, but you deserve it. That's the thing. You got the child it. development process. You Spanger should be an option, but it should be an experience. Right so, so, right, right, I suppose we right, right. paid like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It's okay. But <laughs> never the first, is it says? Never the first go to is what people are saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not the first yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't make it your... that, um... well, I think that's a big distinction as well, is when it's done in the way that you described your mum doing it, in a very authoritative, measured, thought-out way. No control has been lost at any point. Mm -hmm. at no point was your mum out of control of herself or her action. It's when you get parents who just like, you know, the kids making like, I did this, God, and you know, the hand comes out of that. It's, to me, is where the line starts to be crossed, when your control and you're gone in the consequence, there's no sort of punishment element to it, it's just violence. So, you know what I mean? Like, it, there's, there's, with and that's very quickly, like, I don't yeah. know, if, if, I don't know, I was raised with the idea that violence is like an expression of desperation. So when you as a parent, you mm -hmm. just don't know what to do with your child, you just like spank it, hit it, like call it as you want. But I know if, if I would like walk what down the street think? in Germany and would see like a parent, like even like, like not really like hitting, but spanking as you say, I would be like, what's whoa, happening? Whoa. Just for this the is, people who are talking. Normal. Like, I, I know cases where people on the street, like complete <laughs> strangers, would like talk to you. Like, Strangers. If, no, and uh, people will do that up. now in and the US. Up. I think it depends. They they would say like, dude, you should like. Calm and down. to those of you who are who are with us, please keep speaking. This is kind of meant to be an uh, a conversation with you guys as well. So um, we're quite enjoying all of your responses to this. We have a lot of people that are um, familiar with the Colombian culture and live elsewhere. Like some of them are in the US and elsewhere. So it's. Nice to have you guys here and have you feedback with us too. Apparently someone knew you were from Germany. I don't know if, hi Houston, mm -hmm. I'm from Dallas. It's not quite, it's, it's a lot better than Houston, but 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 <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm happy to have you here. <laughs> no, back on the spanking, uh, your accent. Back on the spanking thing. I mean, I personally, I wanna have kids and I, I can't see myself ever personally using spanking as punishment. It's not something I would do myself, but I'm also not someone who thinks that we need to live in this state where it's just like, no one must, you know, because people can be incredibly sensitive about those things. And I, I, I personally don't think that the, the kind of spanking that yeah, you then. described, that you described, mm -hmm. which you described perfectly, is sort of this great, terrible thing. I mean, I can't, I personally wouldn't probably want to spank my kids. I don't think I would. But, you know, I don't at the same time see, you know, I don't look back at my dad, who spanked me on probably enough times to count on the fingers of one hand in my entire childhood. I, I, I struggle to think, look back and think of this shy sweet man as anything other than a parent yeah do you know what i mean I can't yeah you can't look at it like, and see anything oh no that's that's abuse no, it's not abuse man he's a, he's a dad growing up with a kid in the 90s who was occasionally a pain in the ass julian and you're funny a pain in the ass after it was a pain in the ass, yeah. <laughs> um i uh rethink mondays i don't know your name your actual name but apparently rethink mondays which i agree we should probably rethink their existence um he says that his alex hi alex Alex says that his wife doesn't believe 
and spanking, but he was raised in it. So I think that's an interesting dynamic. Like if like you have two parents, but I, I, I do want to ask the question. So what you were saying in terms of, let me turn it back to you because you were saying that, um, uh, she, Alex says his wife was never spanked. So what you were saying is if we're going to talk about domestic violence as it, we should talk about spanking because I guess it, you're saying it's a derivative of some sort. Um, I am interested to know how it escalates to that. What do you think? What is your opinion that, I guess, people who are spanked, what do you think that they go into a relationship? Do you think that that feeds into the acceptance of certain domestic violence? Do you think that feeds into silence? Do you, what, what are you, why did you make that connection is what I'm saying? Well, I mean, if, if you have like experiences like in your, in your childhood, mm -hmm. And that is like more or less acceptable for you to spank your child, mm -hmm. like occasionally. I think, yeah, that might like feed into the um, acceptance okay. of domestic violence. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you guys are or <laughs> people that got spanked occasionally in their childhood are okay with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Right. N we get it. Not <laughs> at all. But maybe the idea, I mean, to me, like, I've never experienced violence. So this is, like, so far away from my, like, from my view, you know, mm -hmm. like, from my world. So maybe it's just, like, more prominent to you because you, like, in your childhood, you had some experiences. But, but we see, don't, I don't, I don't, don't see this as violence. violence. Yeah, I don't think no. it's yeah, violence. Yeah, but maybe that's the problem, that you yeah. don't, don't even yeah, see that as violence. Exactly. I mean, I think that's in Colombia because I, one of the comments of these guys was well, like there's like this fine line between discipline and mm -hmm. domestic violence right so it's have to recognize one. like that yeah. is really because women there's an, a there's a, an advertising in a, comer, a TV commercial that my housemate was talking about mm -hmm. and, it, and she was very surprised because it was this girl that like, with a, a purple eye uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she was talking with her mom, and she was, ah, yeah. How, so how was your honeymoon? Ah, I was ready. Uh, and then suddenly the husband arrives to the place, and then she just um, hangs up. Hangs up. Uh huh. And then the husband is like, you know, Hello, you don't have to. You don't have to. Why are you doing this? Like that's kind of the the discipline you're receiving. You know, you have to learn how to how to behave. And she was, ah, yeah, I have to learn. So imagine they are showing. Girls like okay, this that is happening. That's violence because they don't recognize that they that don't is violence. See it it's violence. Like they don't see. Yeah. yeah. So that's which okay. I I get that. Like, go ahead. Statistically, Rebecca has a point, but it depends on your perception. So you that thin line we, is known as a belt. You said that thin line. Sorry, that thin line is known as the belt, and it has a lot to do with socioeconomic st strata. Finish your mm -hmm. sentence, and then we're going to talk about the socioeconomic strata comment. Sure. So, okay, if you don't perceive being spanked as abuse, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you're abused as a child, then your likelihood of accepting abuse mm -hmm. or being an abuser is statistically much higher yeah, than someone who's that's a proven statistic. Child. Obviously, it has makes complete sense. So, in Colombia, if there's like this big climate of violence and violence is completely normalized, like you say, People don't even realize that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You could be getting hit by your partner and you think this is fucking normal because you know heaps of people this happens and you think, yeah, you think you're getting disciplined. And if mm -hmm. you're in an abusive relationship, doesn't matter if you're not a child, it's a toxic cycle and you have no power. You've lost your power. I feel like so, I I feel like the thing that bothers me the most out of out of well not the most, but the idea of disciplining me. I am an adult. Like the like yeah. the idea of of a spouse saying you have to learn to behave to me is is absolutely asinine. And like I am a connection. grown person who has already learned what I feel like is behaving. Right. But you don't so, usually start a relationship in an abusive way, it becomes abusive. That's true. And it's very complicated. It's not something you can just talk about black and white, like, oh, he hits you, so leave. Not like that at all. Right. So it's not like, oh, you're not five years old. Why don't you just leave? Your boyfriend shouldn't be hitting you. That's not how it works. It's like deeply psychologically complicated. And when it's in a culture where violence is normalized and domestic violence is not talked about and not a priority at all, it makes a lot of sense Agreed. that women stay in this relationship and that no one says anything about it. Mm -hmm. 
and it can be super related to your childhood not always but most of the time yeah no i would say my mom works in a psychiatric hospital and the majority of their backgrounds are that they've been sexually abused mm -hmm. i would say 80 percent i would say the majority of her cases the people have a history of sexual abuse so if you're reflecting on how that affects mental health mm -hmm. it says and men perpetuate perpetuate this because they are also abused yeah. um socio yeah. socioeconomic strata what say we hello welcome um, we mean honest, I don't know what that is. Okay. you mean based like, on the prevalence of it on domestic abuse or lower income Wait, hold on i'm sorry what was that you're saying socioeconomic strata in terms of levels of abuse i think it was julian that said How that i uh about or no alex perhaps that said about um it's based on socioeconomic, yeah, Alex, um, based on so socioeconomic strata. So I don't, I think there's another one. levels of yes. education, Alex says it's yes. based on your levels of education and culture. I, I don't know if it's based on education. Say, I think the socioeconomic strata, the only link I could see there would be if we're talking about, and I see I'm talking about it based on things like spanking your kids, though. That's the way I was looking, not in terms of domestic abuse. In terms of disciplining your kids physically, I think maybe there's a route in. In, in the socioeconomic strata, I imagine that if you've got a lot of money and you basically have enough to never have to really see your children at their worst, you probably don't have as much necessity. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it makes it okay either way, but I think that maybe feeds into it. You know, like there's people yeah. here, for example, who've got a lot of money, whose kids go from daycare to daycare to private tutor to bed, yeah. and their parents and get to see them when they're sweet and sleepy. And yeah. Go, oh, good night. And then there's someone else who has to, like Lauren, for example, has to deal with, like, <laughs> exactly. to deal with their four and five year olds being a little shit. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're sort of like, a, let's say, a single parent, overworked, and this isn't me excuse, it's just saying that maybe there's a factor. Yeah. If you're overworked, he you've says got three kids screaming in the supermarket, point. you've got nothing to do, you're frazzled, you've got to do a job and do this, maybe you're more likely to snap. And that's not acceptable, but I think there's a connection probably between, yeah, between those positions. And let's face it, being a single parent gets a hell of a lot harder when you have less money yeah you know i mean i think which, a single parent when you're rich is which i mm -hmm. feel like yeah, to your point the the issue or not or the thing with that is well when you have a lot of money what do you tell your kids no you know what i mean yeah, no, like when, when damage for the kids i'm not saying the kids come yeah. out good the kids definitely don't necessarily come out of that well but. alex is married to an american german so that explains why his wife does not spank his uh -huh. children <laughs> I think this is really like a cultural issue because um, like violence like I don't know towards your, your children is like unacceptable. What yeah. are alternative measures of discipline then? Well as as Germans are good at discipline. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah. That's true. They're Germans are known for their so discipline. They, know, they, they don't use any Well like in my anything. chat like my dad for instance is like an authority like he doesn't need to like use violence use to, to, to make <laughs> me or, well, but what's the like, word to use what? it's all his attitude that authority doesn't really i mean for me so it, could it, that be just it didn't really come as okay, far as we'll the words that he said but it was like really like but were you scared but so, so here's the thing my mom has always said yeah. that that's that's what one of the main problems is the sexist culture in countries like colombia which yes we've talked about gender roles as well um but but my mom has always said that the reason which is not completely false the reason that we behaved is because we believe that she was just the side of crazy which you guys have met my mom so you oh. probably know that she is just this side of crazy she's real cool now but she was a little crazy then uh -huh. um but my mom did other things that she likes to share but she did other things besides pop us or spank us for mm -hmm. sure that yeah yeah see your mom too like mm -hmm. like my mom's favorite story about me in terms of discipline was basically she embarrassed me um by i went to the store i wanted something i threw <clears> a fit in the store and I wanted it and I screamed and I yelled and so my mom in true Maria Denise Lee fashion laid in the ground with me and screamed and yelled <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like I can't believe every time you um, come to the store you think you gotta have something I'm tired of this I just need to get some milk like she threw some big fit with me and of course she she likes to say that I never threw a fit again which is probably quite true yeah, it's, I, it, it's true but so there are other forms of discipline like I, I agree that there are other forms of discipline but 
the reason for that was I was just a little afraid of her. So my thing is, is how did discipline work for you if you didn't, like, you were like, oh, I was afraid. Well, if that tone didn't come with something, why were you afraid? I Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think it's it's more, like, in my case, it was more a thing to, like, to scream at me. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. if your parents, like, yelled at you, but this, that was, like, the thing. So there was no balance, like, at all. Like, mm -hmm. that are not even balance. Exactly. Yeah. yeah maybe. So. Good point. Yeah. That is a type of violence. And yelling and screaming could be, I mean, so that was, you know how I feel about your father. I totally think he's the cutest thing ever. So <laughs> I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, like, one could argue then that that's still a form of some sort of abuse. If you're going to talk about, because that there is an intimidation that comes with it. There is something that you internalize. There's some kind of fear mm -hmm. that you associate, just like you would associate getting popped mm -hmm. with something negative. You associate that with, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So what is your idea of the line then? Why, why is being yelled at and intimidated or whatever acceptable, but being hit isn't? Because I think being yelled at and intimidated makes you very unconfrontational and can cause you. I think that causes you more social, damage. Yeah, high social issues when you once you're older. Because well, it makes I mean, you retreat into yourself. Yeah, like I mean, you don't. It depends on the degree. Yeah, of or at or some at some age, it's the same. like yeah, I start right. to yeah. yell back, yeah. which is not yeah, but that's not, not healthy right. either. Right. But or yeah, amazing. I think it's really the the thanks for the way you are raised. Like you you say. Um, I mean, with my kids, like, you might, like, spank them from time to mm -hmm. time. And since I was raised, like, with this ye back. yelling, maybe, probably... like, my, like, propensity, like, the possibility that I yell at my kids mm -hmm. is way higher than I would spank my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that yelling is, like, better, better. or worse than spanking, but I think that's, like, the way we were, like... It is a cultural... Educated. Yeah. Man. And do you know about domestic violence in Germany? If it's, like, prevalent or, like, what is it like there? Like, towards women? Right. Uh -huh. Or men. Or men. Or men. <laughs> I feel like I have to accept that my gender is... <laughs> it's generally the flawed gender, but I also have to accept that... And I would say that the, the entire purpose of this conversation has entirely engendered it as something that only happens between... Two women. Two, two women. I'm not saying that it is not the vast majority, which it obviously is. But I do think that... It's like a big thing. I think the big, the best way to change a lot of it is to break down that culture of machismo on both levels. But I think that also involves sort of giving men a space to be sensitive as well. You know yeah. I mean? And not just sort of say domestic violence, men hitting women, period. It's like yeah. that. Mostly men hitting women, sometimes men getting hit by women or by other men or by or whoever, or but, whoever they, they're, they're with, you know, whoever's in the home. But I would also probably say that a lot of the violence that men take would be the yelling. Yeah, like the, the psychological you, element is probably stronger. Right. So, it, like, if you're going to talk about domestic view, abuse in terms of even... Because, yeah, maybe fewer men take a solid beating. Because, right. Well, let's be honest, generally, men physically tend to be, you know, you won't yeah. necessarily be overpowered. But, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be a solid beating for it to be domestic abuse. Somebody can right. throw it out of a fucking jab. And really, you, like, and really you can throw a thing. You know what I mean? And that's like, still... Abuse, like oh, exactly. the you threat, don't the threat like of that is still, yeah. You know. But no, I'm saying like you can throw a whole pot, a whole pot. like no, there no, are, there no. are jokes that are made. They're like, yeah, we'll just oh, yeah. throw some hot grits on you, and you know that's. Mm -hmm. um the, They start yelling someone, and then they end up killing someone. He says. I mean, he's saying that in terms of abuse, in terms of women toward men, basically he's saying it escalates quickly. It starts with yelling and ends with killing, which. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. I mean, I feel like I feel. Like, I mean, there's a whole show called Snapped on Lifetime. Don't judge me, but I watch it. But and it's and I remember my ex boyfriend being like, "I'm really concerned with you always watching Snapped because it's always women killing their husbands." <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. The, the information on like women's abuse toward their children, and then that affecting the guys instead of. What do you mean? You mean like boy like. Mother getting her no, their children, their girls or their boys. Like I'm whether correct. that happens, that occurs more often than them being domestically violent with their husbands. Right. Uh, um, in terms of women actually hitting, taking it out on their children. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because, yeah. because there's a power. That's not addressed that often. Just because yeah, there's a 
They, because that's where they can actually assert power. They yeah. can't really necessarily. Yeah, it's sort of power abuse, no? And like, yeah, abuse of power. And then whoever is there for. Dice, for you, yo creo que, que la mujer, mujer al final de caso es más peligrosa. Hmm. I think with the in Do you know the Natalia Ponce case? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, as a group, we do not. So feel free to throw that up there whilst you continue your statement. No, I was just going to say, in terms of what we talked about, about sort of triggers and processes that lead to a stronger prevalence to domestic violence or something like that. And we were talking about well, yelling and spanking and. I think it's one of those things where I don't know the statistics on it, but I think that it's when it's when things like that become completely normalized and internalized that's a big problem. Like the spanking thing, hypothetically. If you learn that violence is the the answer to the problems, do you know what I mean? If, if if the parents are just lashing out every time any little cloud goes in the horizon, that's when it sort of becomes a slightly more insidious and dangerous phenomenon. Do you know what I mean? Where the kid learns then that that's how you deal with your problems. Mm -hmm. If it's a sort of, you know, because the spanking I'm talking about, I'm not even advocating, but saying I don't think is too terrible, is the kind Janelle's talking about, where the child learns that actually there will be five or six times that the parent is very clear with them about what, you know, they're supposed to be, and that's the learning process. Right, yeah. When you're five years old, it's something behavior. I don't see it as... It's okay, it's not together in the world, too, but certainly yeah. I don't think the absolute worst thing in the world, I think... Um, but I think, yeah, it's when the violence becomes completely normalised yeah. and mm -hmm. internalised, and you just... And, and that could be yelling. That doesn't have to be a physical thing. It could be that, mm -hmm. like you said, the, fir the first reaction of a child who is yelled at for every little thing mm -hmm. might be to explode in the same way when they grow up. I think it, it, it works like that. And it? I feel like it's also one of two spectrums. Like when you're when you're yelled at, you either be like Rebecca, this precious little thing over here, <laughs> and yell back, or you turn into someone who generally retreats yeah, you and like don't speak yeah. at all. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it, but you said it. Um, oh, oh crap, I missed it. Sorry, the Natalia Ponce. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to make you type that again. Mm -hmm. Don't judge me. Um, if you teach a toddler that violence is okay, he will later use it. Is this is the statement that's being made? I'm really but, sorry. I mean, that's that's a sorry. pretty broad generalization. I mean, it depends how we're defining violence as okay because which I think that's what that we we've... assume that. Five spankings in ten years is violence. Then I think that's taking it too far. I think when it's what I was saying is if it's if we teach a toddler, yeah, I agree with it in that sense. If we teach a toddler that that's just the the way you get shit done, then that's when it becomes something that's possibly going to develop issues later in life. Which I also think the main thing that we've all taken away from okay, the Natalia Ponce case is a history of a woman who ends uh, with its boyfriend. Hold on, still typing. Sorry. Um, but I think what we've learned is how are we defining violence? That's the the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Well, I don't think spankings are violent. I I agree with you there. Um, oh, he said earlier he wished that he could talk because typing was so low, so slow. So he just changed and busted out the keyboard so he could type quicker. So he <laughs> responds. So, um, but um, I think that's the main thing that we've said is what are we acid throwing on women? Somebody oh. Julian's talking about that. Um, but I think, so, okay, what about, we've talked about domestic violence and, um, ah, the Natalia Ponce case was acid throwing on women, I think. Is that what I'm Oh, is, that, is he talking about the really recent case in Colombia that was sort of I the, mm, I think the trigger so. for the Congress making the laws? That they I, th I think so. I think so. What I'm sure it? that they will, conf yes. That, no, he was just asking if we knew about oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't know the name. I had heard about it, but I didn't know the name. So what was it about? It was, it was the acid attack that kind of was the, the prompt to kind of get the thing talked about in Colombia's Congress. It was that specific. I'm guessing oh, that's what the it's name. Happened. Okay. No, 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 no about acid attacks. Yeah. Which aren't necessarily Ash, domestic. Acid attacks don't tend to be domestic, actually. They tend to be people who don't live together, and often people who don't really know each other that well. It tends to be, mm -hmm. this it tends to be sort of spurned lovers, mm -hmm. tends to be, or spurned wannabe lovers tend to be. I think that is a slightly cultural thing as well, this kind of idea that, because there's definitely a, we definitely teach a weird sense of kind of entitlement among young men. I notice that a lot, you know, this idea of like, you, you, if, a, if a girl rejects you, the, the, the reaction isn't, okay, well, either, oh, well, that's life, or, oh, well, what was it about me? It's yeah, dumb bitch, why doesn't she like me? She should. That's yeah. the, the go-to for a lot of young men, particularly. I think 
I'd, I'd, I'd hasten to blame it. I'd only be one of those guys who's like, it's all those violent video games. It's, not, yeah. <laughs> it's a complicated list of things, but I, I think that... And it's a very intricate list yeah, of things. Yeah, a very things. intricate list of things. But that's, I think that's a big problem, is this idea, because you see it all the time in clubs. That's, that is you know, there's incidents where men, you, a man kicks off in a club, and you see that, you really have a lot of punches and go, or attacks mm -hmm. or verbally abuses. There's mm -hmm. often a response to this feeling of, rejection but yeah. feeling but not even feeling rejection feeling like yeah. why don't you like that do like a common attitude don't, i think yeah. a lot of men have yeah i had and the acid attack is the ultimate extreme obviously but yeah. yeah i had an experience of that actually in australia um where i was dancing in a salsa club and this really really big muscly italian guy wanted to dance with me and i was like not wanting to so i was like moving away and he was like give me your phone number and i was like no and he was like why do you have a boyfriend and i said no and he said, why won't you give me your phone number? I said, because I don't want to give you my phone number. And he grabbed both of my forearms and was like, why don't you want to give me your phone number? And got really aggressive. And then this other Peruvian guy had to come and like push him away. Wow. So this was like a perfect example of this well, the attitude. Because that very individually is definitely an asshole, but also... Society has told him that if he gets big muscles at the gym, women will want him. Right. He's angry. Mm. He and doesn't understand why they don't. Why isn't that money I spent on the gym mean I can get laid every time I want? Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's not excusing his individual actions. That guy needs to learn some fucking respect. But at the same yeah. time, yeah. it is a complicated little process the way those things work. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
rundown of what Nomad Connection is. So Nomad Connection is, as you see, a couple of people that are all from different places. And um, we decided to put together a group and sit around and talk about the things that we experienced here in Colombia. Um, there are actually more of us. They're not all here. We used to be nine. Um, but uh, since we are nomads, people come and they go. So we've got new people coming in, old people going out. Sad no, we're not educators. No, we're, we're not educators. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we're not educators. So, mm -hmm. we um, all chose Colombia. We all happened to run into each other. We all became friends. Um, and so, we get together every other week and we chat about, we pick a subject and we chat about it. We talk about our experience here in Colombia with that particular topic. And then we exchange ideas about what it's like in our own our own countries, in our own um, motherlands, if you will. So that's the first question. The second question, you're supposed to help me remember. I was supposed to. Uh, Dang it! Either way. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait, he said, is, yeah. Is there a special crime? Is there a special, I guess, punishment for women crimes in your countries? So I guess, I, I guess, and correct me if I'm asking your your question incorrectly, but I guess what the question is is, are women treated differently? No, <laughs> and you wouldn't say so. I don't know. I know Australia is like a Western country. I don't think it's faring any better or worse in terms of machismo than Colombia. I just think it manifests itself in a completely different way. So machismo here, maybe it's more like prevalent or something, but in Australia, it 100% exists, um, and it just manifests itself in a different way. And maybe it's more hidden, and people think it doesn't exist, and that we have equality, which is a complete lie. But, like, any kind of legal proceedings for any gender-based crime in Australia is complete crap because it's bottom of the priority list and it's, it's stigmatised. So, firstly, women don't want to report gender-based crimes. That's world over. It doesn't matter if you're Colombian or Australian. You have the same stigma. You don't want to report your crime. And it makes sense because if you do try and report your crime, you're not going to be treated as if your crime is as important as a different kind of crime because it's gender-based, therefore less important. And it's um, it's just not treated well, like by the police, by the court, it's not given prevalence, it's treated like, oh, oh, this, this thing happened. It's like a humiliating crime. And for that mm -hmm. reason, it's difficult to get justice. And so then why would women do it? And that's in Australia, and that's in Colombia, and I think that's all over the world, and probably yes. in Germany. Yes, I mean, social services are, like, is, are the first thing that are cut, like, like financial-wise. So, if, I don't know, the state doesn't have any, any budget, where do you cut first? Social sector. Mm -hmm. So, then that's also the case in Germany, so... Mm -hmm. It just sends you a message, like, oh, this happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> no one cares. Do or, or we don't have enough money to care for, about you right now. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what it's like. It's like, uh, eh, we have other things that we would like to put our money in. We don't really have enough money to care about you right now. We'll get back to you when we do have the funds. Mm -hmm. We spend plenty of it bo bombing the aforementioned <laughs> Middle Eastern country. It's true. Yeah. Then we have money. money. Get, get we have money for, for that. For everything for, that yeah. happens in our society. <laughs> it's the same in England, really the same thing. Every scourge that's hit our streets is definitely the fault of immigrants. It's definitely, mm. it's definitely not a fault of society in general. It has it's nothing definitely. to do with the people that are actually oh, in no, the country. Not, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah. Committing the yeah, acts. Yeah. Okay. I mean, our government's going through one of the most vicious cuts <laughs> processes in the modern, sort of developed world, so to speak, at the moment. And yeah, the first things to go tend to be the things that actually help the most helpless members of society first. Care for mm. disabled people, people with learning disabilities, um, abuse. People, women, it also women, has a lot to do with the fact that they don't have a voice. Well, yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's yeah, not a the priority. problem with the social sector is also that you always need numbers and results. So if you like invest in, in social service and if you invest in people or like in, in women's shelters, for instance, you might not have like concrete results mm -hmm. on the social work you're doing. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, more it's difficult to justify. I think it's a short-sightedness that extends to the way that our governments go about most things. Mm -hmm. I think it tends to be the case that instead of... Because obviously it, it's always a double edged thing. You have to invest money in combating the problem as it stands now, but you also have to invest time and effort and probably money 
in getting to the root of the problem for future right. generations. Mm -hmm. And that made me think of that as the thing we're talking about. Well, the Middle East is not really what we're talking about, but it's that same mm -hmm. thing. Is that our solution tends to be for most things, throw money at it now, regardless yeah. of how you spend that money, throw money at it now. And when it doesn't sort of go away, we go, well, this clearly isn't is working. Is it working? And it's like, well, yeah, it's not working because you're not addressing the root you're of the problem. You're not doing all of the, you're not, yeah, the, the you're not changing, you're not making it enough of a priority. You, you, because again, domestic violence is something that isn't talked about with as much force and as much, as, as clearly and as loudly. In things like schools, for example, mm -hmm. get them young, you know. Yeah. And then other things, and again, it's things like that that get cut. And funny because it goes, oh, why are we spending $2 million a year on sending that guy around the schools to say domestic violence is wrong? Well, and there's still domestic violence, cut them. And, and something will spend mm -hmm. more, maybe. Yeah. And maybe then in the future like you'll spend less like... on women's shelters, perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you know, combining them with, yeah. No, no, maybe, no, I mean, maybe one day you don't actually have as many problems, maybe sure, 100 sure. years time, but maybe one day you know, because that's how government subjects, what you say is the bottom line. But there's mm -hmm. also those parents who are like, and and I hate to lump these parents all into the same thing, but the, the, a lot of the ones who are like, oh my God, she popped her kid on the hand, so let's have her arrested, because people are arrested mm -hmm. for popping their kid on the hand in, in a mall or whatever. But um, you have those same people who are like, oh, well, it's my job to educate my children. You don't need to talk to them about such sensitive topics. like. They don't want you to talk about race or domestic violence or it's sex education. or anything no, in yeah, school. It's it's you know what I mean? Because yeah. because that's my job. And the problem is, yeah, but you weren't doing that at home. So we have a strange attitude. That we seem to have this attitude that by bringing something up, we'll give them the idea to do it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They, they <laughs> have no idea. They don't know what it is. And right now, they don't have a clue. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> that tends to be the attitude. So, so shit, if we bring up sex, they'll they'll find out about sex. Like mm -hmm. spoiler alert, they they, they, they kind they, of know. They are friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem is, is you're not the one telling them. So, but I think if they included sort of like a more real kind of holistic, true version of sex education, you could eliminate a lot of domestic violence right there. I was going to say I will, the same I will thing. also say emotional education, like uh -huh. intelligent, emotional intelligence, no? Because that's something that you don't really, I mean, as a child, you don't really have an idea. You just Your know you have, have an idea. It's yeah. not part exactly, but you don't have to, you don't know how to control it. Yeah. Like while you uh, um, uh, grow up and then you start having like I don't know like living different experiences, then you learn like okay this is I react in this way. Okay, that was not the the great result, so let's do it differently. Mm -hmm. But it's just like self self learning, no? Yeah. So and there's a lot of people and theory that already is there that can be used, but uh, it's just nobody's really doing something about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I do I agree that sex education too with an an emotional education how to how to handle it maturely I suppose those things would help a lot with with domestic violence yeah I also think it would be awesome if when people not awesome but it would be useful if when people think of domestic violence they think of like the emotional psych emotional psychological and physical aspect of what that means like we've spoken a lot just about like the physical part mm -hmm. but I mean, any group right now that's lobbying for domestic violence to be put on like international development agendas or whatever are talking about it, you know, from all aspects yeah. because it has the same similar effect. Doesn't matter if you're getting hit or not, if you're in an abusive and relationship. It's, it's usually a progression. Yeah. You got hit, but it didn't usually start with. You made me right. mad, I'm gonna hit you. It started with, you made me mad, I'm gonna yell at you. You made me mad, I'm gonna yell at you and I'm gonna threaten you. You made me mad, I'm gonna yell at you and I'm gonna threaten you. And, and it just kept escalating. So I remember in high school, yeah, the first I'm time- with you. Huh? Uh, yeah, it was like, if you're struggling with day-to-day -day needs, uh, emotional yeah. uh, goes as a last priority. Yeah, also. that's true, that's true. Yeah. And it's pretty essential as well to break the stigma that we have a lot around the world on, on mental health. Yes. Yes. Because that plays a big part, and it's such a stigma, even you know, in our countries as much as anywhere else. I mean, it's a stigma across the world. Is that you know people don't Very deal different. with those problems because it seems flawed, it's seen as somehow less of a. But do you know what I mean? Like you don't you don't deal with that stuff. You just internalize it. You think no, it's it's weird. It's it's not normal. You don't. That's, that's a very Western thing, almost. Because um, in Colombia, you don't really have anything like the same levels of mental. But that doesn't necessarily mean people don't have it. It just means it's that it's just something that you just don't do. If you're a sort of hard-working, sort of, you know, macho man who's supposed to be this and supposed to be that, and you get really sad at night and can't do things, you just think, well, I've got to get on with this, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I it think. comes out in ways that think... are not acceptable, but that you don't have as much control over, because you have a problem and you, mm. you're, you're not getting the help you need for it. And maybe... It's not to excuse it, it's just to say that I think that that, 
is a big part of it. And it's the same with things like even gun violence. It's not to say that people with mental health issues are responsible for gun violence, but there's a lot of things that probably could have been prevented if people yeah. felt able to come out and talk about it. So really what we're mm -hmm. saying, just going to throw this out there, cut some of the bullshit, and just say what we're saying is if we treat humans like yeah. humans... What's that word? <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we treat people like humans at the beginning, perhaps we could help with mental health, abuse, is that what we're saying? Because that's kind of what I think we're saying. Well, I think like, certain elements of mental health can't be it can't, necessarily, you can't really do anything yeah. to control. But, but, I think but if we teach to... people how to respond yeah, exactly, to people, yeah, yeah. or we teach, yeah. we educate people how to treat people, or how to be aware of what ever the illness is, because there are so many different mm -hmm. mental illnesses. We teach people, because a lot of the times, um, with some of the experience that I have with, with mental illness and, and dealing with people that have a mental illness is you have to know what their trigger is too. Mm -hmm. So if we are taught that at a younger age and we're taught to recognize this person has a trigger, then perhaps we can a not touch the trigger and b our overall humane, I guess, treatment of them will help them learn their trigger. Like, it, like I feel like it would help each other, right? If we know how to treat them, then they know how to receive our treatment of them. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but those things also still will, will play into a domestic violence type of situation, right? So if, if this person has a trigger, let's just say, because I'm not going to say that people who are domestic, because mental illness is an actual chemical, it's, it's an illness. Whereas some people who are hitting people are just pissy. Yeah, and yeah, so I'm not, not or yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm trying, I'm not trying to link them at all. But if we, if we start at the beginning with finding out those things, then perhaps maybe this person who is not mentally ill, but could grow up with the pro propensity to hit someone mm -hmm. or abuse someone, we've still learned their trigger. We've treated everybody the same where we learn a trigger and they learn how to deal with the trigger, whether it's a mental illness or it's just, I don't know how to control my emotions. We've started at age six instead of waiting at age 56 when he's killed a wife yeah. or she's mm -hmm. killed a husband. Also, what Lauren said, like the mental illness thingy seems more prevalent in Western countries. I'm not sure, but maybe that's just like the marker of a more privileged society where we can then delve into the realm of, oh, you have a mental illness and this is something that we need to address. Is Asia, or is that in Asia, it's much more familiar, even growing up with, with an Asian best friend and having her, having someone with mental illness in her family. They kept that person in their house. Mm -hmm. They took care of that person. Mm -hmm. They felt responsible for that person. I feel like as I feel like a lot of people who are raised, I don't, I don't know how to categorize this, but I feel like Americans, generational Americans, are more likely to not feel that sort of compassion or familiar necessity to keep that person in the house. Like, they're more look, likely to look outside for resources. That's not a problem, but, like, I don't know, the lack of responsibility mm -hmm. that they have for their love or their familiar person I think, is more prevalent, I think, in the Western culture versus Asian culture. I think it's the so, taboo thing and the stigma is a big part yeah. of it as well, is the fact that, you know, nowadays, if, if, for example, if you raise a, a depressed or schizophrenic or well, with any psychological condition, son or daughter, there's a tendency for people to point the blame on the parents. on parents or on family and to say, oh, what could we have done? Oh, this is somehow our fault. This is a flaw in us. Rather than just acknowledging it. Nobody looks at a kid with diabetes. Well, actually, that's not necessarily true because you might yeah, feed them yeah. terrible food. But let's say, all right, well, all right, let's use an example of something that you can't have much control over than a kid, a kid with cancer. You wouldn't, nobody would look at that kid and go, well, those damn parents, yeah. they did a terrible job raising that cancer child. No, yeah. you wouldn't say that at all. You wouldn't say I don't see why that's a weird thing to say, Charlie. <laughs> it's, 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 it's your delivery. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's your delivery. Yeah. It's, not, it's not what you're saying. But I think that's actually but, a slightly yeah. relevant thing as well, is that we do live in a slightly... We live in an incredibly weirdly sensitive society that is sensitive about the wrong things. I really I do think that. I think we, we're not sensitive about domestic abuse, yeah. about mental health, but we're incredibly sensitive if somebody says something like... I remember once I was here and I said, Oh yeah, my granddad. I mean, he's dead now. And everyone went, Ooh. Like, Why is that a weird thing to say? He's, he was alive and now he's dead. It's not like, so I didn't kick him, you know. But uh, no, I think that's weird. We, we do have weird priorities in order. And it's the same in the UK. Yeah. We have these priorities. Somebody does something awful and we go out and we go, who can we blame it on? 
-hmm. rather than saying what could we have maybe done to stop this from happening mm -hmm. perhaps if it wasn't something if people understood it i think it's understanding and i do mm -hmm. think and it, i think in a sense it's the same with almost any thing that you know disorder or crime or anything is to try and i think empathy is usually a, a fairly decent start to try and kind of move things forward i think anybody conde condemning in general doesn't often help situations it might mm -hmm. make people feel better but it doesn't help situations just going out of the bed just awful it's the same with politics you can't just look at the other side and go oh they're all horrible racist bastards and i hate them because that doesn't mean, that doesn't fix anything does it mm -hmm. it's the same with a lot of things um, yeah. you know what i mean like maybe you know like rehabilitation for example rather than strong jail services for sure. a lot of times right. is, is a far preferable thing to do than just like oh you're bad uh, like, you yeah. know, 10 years where you can just I learn to you learn this with interaction oh sorry <laughs> oh sorry sorry oh sorry i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that happened so i was focusing that ah yeah okay <laughs> um oh yeah it did it went from 10 to i'm sorry i'm really sorry so um i i guess i haven't really i've been participating so i wasn't really looking at the screen so i'm not sure if you had something to add to that in particular i'm just looking at you sorry no, i like the i don't think so okay great uh -huh. um what was i gonna ask dang it i lost my question um yes what are your questions i had a few questions oh crap he says but it's past can you still ask them we can go back yeah we can definitely go back Ah, he says, I can't remember now. <laughs> That's also like totally our lives. We're like, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. Um, but, um, I don't know. I think, I think so. Well, you know what? We didn't really talk about the U S at all. Like when was the first time you even rec like for me, I remember the first time that I recognized, thanks for the love that I actually saw, um, domestic violence. I was in high school. And it was a girl that I actually knew relatively well and still kind of know. Um, but um, her boyfriend, I just remember being around the corner um, where I couldn't see them. And I remember it was in between classes and I remember there was yelling, she was yelling something. And I remember hearing the loudest thud that I actually fell, like I felt under my feet. And I heard this loud thud and I turned the corner just in time to see him like, standing over her and he had like pushed her up against the locker and pushed her down on the ground and so that was like the first time I even saw anything and of course the school they didn't treat it as a domestic violence because domestic violence doesn't happen when you're 14 you're just 14 so it was just a school fight but no no yeah no I recognize that it was very much domestic violence but the way that the school treated it was like oh it was just a fight and I'm like, no, no, that's not, that's not a fight. He hit her and he pushed her down on the ground and an entire hallway of people saw it. And Nobody no did. one did anything. It also didn't help that he was actually a very popular football player, but, um, which we could probably get on a completely different topic. If you want to talk about different punishment for different people, it would probably be people who have the monies. Um, it's true, we do send a strange message to people with the way that we deal with high profile mm -hmm. abuse cases. Yeah. I mean, you talked about football, but that case with that Ray Rice fellow. It was Ray Rice, right? He was the one who yeah. punched yes. his girlfriend in the, in the elevator. Time. And, and it... he was banned for, what, four games? And it was then lowered mm -hmm. to one on appeal or something? Like mm -hmm. He banned him from, still got paid. Yeah. So he still got paid, you know. But the thing is that... Like, he... it's, like, it's like you get, you get leave. You get you get a paid that's vacation. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying about legal proceedings. It's just like, why do I bother to report this? Mm. Right. The thing is, but then you see the strange phenomenon of mass media getting involved and interviewing his girlfriend. You see the really peculiar play that sort of sort of domination has on on those relationships. Where you see his girlfriend come on television with him smiling, sitting next to her. That's quite important, sitting right next to her. To say that, you know, oh he's he's not a bad guy really. This happened, but and it kind of gives a weird insight into that psychological element because I think what you were saying about psychological abuse often being the precursor to physical abuse is quite important because it's a tactic that a lot of sort of potential abusers use is to first destroy that person's self-esteem entirely mm -hmm. to the point where they feel that they deserve what they're getting yeah. and that's a really common tactic it's the little put downs and yeah. my, my only real experience of what you might call domestic abuse, I'm not going to name any names because right. I'm not even sure I remember one of them, but there was a couple I sort of vaguely knew and you could just see the little early signs because you could see the guy had a tendency to 
call his girlfriend kind of stupid, not that overtly, but it was these little... Little ways of saying it. When you don't sort of see the whole process, you don't, I don't want to cast aspersions here, but it, you don't necessarily notice those signs. You just mm-hmm. think, oh, he's a bit of an asshole, or he's, or he's a bit of a bully, isn't he? You don't necessarily see that as the warning signs to what might lead to physical abuse, because that's often the tactic. Yeah. Not necessarily a thought-out tactic, but it's often the first manifestation. You just, yeah. you get that person's self-esteem so low that you're easily able to say, why do you make me do this to you? That's yeah. why you hear quoted all the time. All the you know, time. People wailing on somebody saying, why do you make me do this to you? Uh-huh. And the person, it, it, they internalize that and they feel that they're worthless and that they're somehow responsible uh-huh. for the way that that violence comes out. So. And then it becomes a cycle because once you've destroyed the person's self-esteem and then you've gone to physical violence, the person won't leave you because mm-hmm. they already... Course, because they believe that there's nothing they can get that's better yeah. because they're an awful worthless person and you've made them think that. Exactly, so that's why mm-hmm. you see the girl on TV saying, like, he's not that bad, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because she honestly believes, well, that's what I deserve now. Yeah. But we see that message all the time in the sort of, in the kind of celebrity abuse cases, sort of the Bill Cosby thing that's coming out, is mm-hmm. that we teach a message that a man's reputation is more valuable than a woman's life. Hmm. Which is a common message we put out there. When when a, when a high profile figure is accused by multiple people who have no connection to each other of abuse, people are so quick to come out and say, "Oh, but you know the man's done great thing. We should be dragging his name through the mud." And it's like, okay, we shouldn't sort of put him in the gallery and start throwing tomatoes at him like we're in the Middle Ages. But at the same time, that sends out a message that the valid claims of a woman are less valuable than a man's reputation. That is one hell of a quote. Yeah. I'm definitely posting that. That's going to, I will credit you, but that's going to be on my Facebook. It's fine. (laughs) But that's like, that's like this. I think I did, but I internalized, so I don't know. Maybe I did. But yeah, no, that's, that's, that's one hell of a quote that, that we, we make it seem as though a man's reputation is more important than a woman's life. And that's, Something I feel like is echoed mm-hmm. many times. I mean, look in history. Look at Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. He's idolized as, I mean, he did great work, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But look at his relationship with his wife and the women in his life. There are definitely lots of allegations that he was kind of a womanizer. John Lennon. Mm-hmm. John Lennon. Mm-hmm. John Lennon. Get a piece of Jack. But, but you know, room. but the the interesting thing is th- that their reputation was never removed from them. No, they're idolized. Yeah. Except for maybe Malcolm X. But... Uh, Malcolm X already yeah. he, he was already his his reputation was already a struggle for mi- for mainstream America. Mainstream America wasn't filling Malcolm X from the beginning. <laughs> Although I'm quite the Malcolm X fan personally. <laughs> but, but, uh, what, what, Malcolm X did what? <laughs> I, I used to love him. Don't like him anymore. Yeah. Right. No, I definitely. Yeah. Malcolm <laughs> Malcolm X. He kind of came in on a on a weak side to begin with. <laughs> Um, it's one of those things, that's the argument you often hear when you bring up sort of iconic celebrities who were guilty, either accused or genuinely guilty of sort of spousal abuse or something like that. The argument tends to be, oh, come on, you know, he did one thing once and look at all the good things he did. It's like, okay, but your argument is that we shouldn't define him based on one thing, but you're, you're leaving Using out, that. Out that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that we have to now burn all our Beatles records, but it's something that has to be part of the conversation when we say talk about what an awesome like person you can't he was. Yeah. I would choose to ignore the really bad stuff and focus only on the good things. Even yeah. if it's not something that you sort of bring up all the time, it's still something that should be acknowledged at least, rather than just yeah. like buried away. You know, and if it was like, no, we're not from Colombia. We are from. Go ahead and hit oh, the room. Uh, England. Australia. U.S. Germany. Mexico. And U.S. Okay, mm-hmm. go ahead. But if it was a different crime, for example, like if a high-profile person does a different crime that has nothing to do with women, I wonder how general people would perceive it. I don't know, like if someone is guilty for manslaughter or they're guilty of beating up their wife, how does the general population, is um, like one treated different? I don't speak French. She speaks a little French, but she's going to say that she doesn't, but she speaks a little bit of French. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if it was a famous person... I don't know, though, because I was about to say that I think it's a famous person now in contemporary times, it might be a sort of different reaction. I'm not 100% sure it would be a different reaction, because we just used that Ray Rice guy as an example. That's incredibly contemporary, mm. and that reaction wasn't particularly different. Mm. I mean... But I I'm know. saying, like, if he... If it wasn't related to a woman, do you think he would then get condemned or not? Still, just for his high profile? Pablo Escobar is a good example yeah. of what... Oh, um... Like I, any I think we have a tendency once we're in relationships to say things like, oh, that's oh, a, a womanizer. 
mm-hmm. when it's the, it's the, 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 the irony is not lost on me. Home ourselves. Mm-hmm. We close the door on the outside and throw away the key and just go, oh, that's something that happens in their home. We shouldn't meddle in other people's business. That tends to be a part of the narrative, you know what I mean? Like the neighbours see things are wrong, but they're like, oh, that's their, that's their business. We shouldn't poke our noses in. And mm-hmm. Maybe sometimes, yeah, I think that's maybe part of it. I think if a crime sort of goes outside the front door, they're people take more notice because they worry. Pablo they Escobar is there. a good example yeah. of a person with clout being able to to be viewed by some as a good person. It is interesting, in spite of their blat- of their blatant crimes, which is interesting. It's like, yeah, sure, uh, you can you can do all these things, kill women, hit women, treat them terribly, but yay, money. Yeah, but you read in a book somewhere that you built some houses, so... <laughs> you have money and you take care of... Like, yeah, it's great that you take care of all these wonderful people, except for the time that you beat all the other ones. Like, the, it doesn't it doesn't really boils down to how much people like you and how many people like you. Can we also just say it's not how much people like you and how many people, it also boils down to what kind of people like you. Because if the right people like you, AKA like anybody in the justice system, it's pretty much good. <laughs> there's, a, there's a way to get around it. Yeah. But I feel like maybe that comes down to the thing we talked about before about sort of the idea of not wanting to sort of encourage children <laughs> to do something by just telling them it exists. Do you know what I mean? Like we don't maybe elevate these crimes to the status they deserve to be in the national narrative and put them on TV. And so, because there's almost this fear of like, we've got to keep it quiet. It's like yeah. the education yeah. thing. We don't educate people enough about these things. So it's like, shit, if we tell them it exists, maybe they'll do it, which is the, the ridiculous attitude. And maybe that's part of the reason why we, we sort of get very defensive when someone is accused, a high-profile person is accused of, say, sexual abuse or, or physical abuse. We, that's maybe why we sort of go, oh, well, you know, let's, well, let's wait, and see what, we'll wait and see what the courts say. Let's not make a big thing about it, which is, I mean, yeah, everybody has to have their day in court. That's the part of our justice system. But at the same time, it doesn't mean we sit around defending that person. You know, it isn't until proven guilty goes both ways. So someone just <laughs> said it's about being, it's not about people that like you. It's about being a man. But let's take that Ray okay, Rice. I, I don't, I'm just go with me on this. So let's take that Ray Rice situation. What, if that were a woman that was able to beat a man up like that, how do you think? We have an example. We have another elevator grainy footage of a woman beating up a man in her own family in the Beyonce, Jay-Z family. Do we not? Good point. We have the exact same scenario. Well, not exactly the same scenario, but we have a grainy elevator footage of a, a woman in a family hitting a man. That man is on point on this day. I'll be damned. <laughs> that was totally different. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that the crimes are necessarily exactly the same thing. I mean, Ray Rice knocked his girlfriend unconscious. Unconscious, with yeah. So, I mean, and then she dragged her off of... Like she... Yeah, no, I mean, but that's the thing. I think that there was a different Hi, because them. when that happened, there were memes all over the internet showing Jay-Z is essentially a big softie. Yeah. And Solange is some sort of uber, uber-empowered woman. Which yeah. Is, which is still bollocks at the end of the day. I mean, it, it's not a proportional level crime, but it's still bullshit. Because all that does is tell a bunch of men, no, not yeah. even a bunch, the little few percentage of men who are in abusive situations or have been abused by family members, that you are, oh my God, you got hit by a girl. And it's, it's, <laughs> you know it's I mean? also it's really like, easy for men to be abused, I think, physically, by a woman. Be, well, because first, they don't want to hit, can't, we, yeah, we, you can't we, hit them back. You don't hit, you don't hit a woman because, and yeah, no, it's, it's a complicated thing. I think that the, the, the Solange Knowles thing is funny because all we got was a bunch of humorous, memes about it, which would never happen were the shoe on the other foot. And I'm not no. saying that it's anything like as prevalent, but at the same time, it's an interesting response. It is an interesting mm-hmm. response to how how we perceive the value of of different, uh, of what is essentially still domestic abuse. Yeah. What value we subscribe to. That was, yeah. that was a really good example. Men are denigrated if they say mm. they were abused by a woman. Mm. Uh, by a woman. Yeah. It's true. And I think that actually would prevent abuse from men to women in, in a stronger level. If on a broader sense, men were and I'm not saying it's like, oh, we need to help men. But yeah, if, if men were able to feel in society more able to be vulnerable and to be sensitive and to be unhappy and to be upset or to, or to be depressed, or to be mm-hmm. unhappy, and that goes both ways, men or women. But men are you know, expected to be a certain way. And I think that allowing men a kind of, as it were, safe <laughs> cultural space to be sad and to be human yeah. would be a big step in the direction of... of so that men don't have to be superheroes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would be a big step in the direction of solving a lot of people's problems, I think. Not just in the domestic abuse sense, but in the sense of suicide among young men or, or, or gun violence or any of those things, I think. Would I be think a, what he's saying yeah. makes a lot of sense, though. It's true, because then I think they'd be less likely to be perpetrators of violence if they felt like safe to... If they have another outlet. Yeah. Right, then yeah. why do you need to be violent? Why do you need to prove 
something? Why do you need to prove your dominance? Yeah. yeah no, that's not to release really your frustration in that way. No? Mm -hmm. And if the expectation is not for you to just always be dominant, if the right. expectation is for you to be hello, if the expectation is for you to be a well rounded human being, then. Be equal with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go and sit with your friends in the pub who are all men and tell them that you're really, really sad and you don't know why, instead of sitting around at home thinking like you're crazy and ending up jumping off a fucking building at 22, which is, suicide is the biggest killer among, among young men in the Western world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, for self-abuse, that's something we've not even come, come yeah. to. I mean, that could be, if we really brought it down to sort of a, a vague sense of domestic violence in the sense that it's violence committed against yourself in your mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. it could be a big problem as well. Well, that's a whole different conversation but still that's interesting so i think we're well i'm gonna say we're gonna wrap it up mostly because well i don't have a battery so um oh we're long actually over see we were worried we weren't gonna have enough it's energy like to talk about things <laughs> and look at us having some energy to talk about some things uh um we were told that was great you guys um so i'm very glad that you joined us um yeah, he says he's totally following us. So we got a new follower. That's awesome. Woohoo! Woo Welcome to the family. Um, so um, is there anything that anybody else would like to say to wrap up? I mean, I feel like we've talked a lot about a lot of different things and covered um, a lot of different things, but specifically about domestic violence. No? Just say no, no. Just, is, that, is that drugs or is that? I'm not really sure what's happening. Um, yeah, so I'm going to turn it back around really quick. Oh, just joined. Oh, sorry, we're actually about to leave, but please follow us. Um, I'm not really sure what the next project will be, or topic rather will be, um, but this is Miss, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to do it. I'm really sorry. This is Jen's last nomad connection with us. So um, we're saying goodbye to her. Um, I know, he says, oh no. Um, so hopefully she will still join us in Australia or at least send us questions so that we can say, Jen also has these questions. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're not going to be able to join us. God bless you, Jen, and good journey, he says. Um, so she maybe she can send us some, she's not going to be able to join us live. I mean, unless you just feel like waiting up super early. Yes, we're all in Colombia now. Um, but um, so, yes, this is her last one. Um, feel free to follow, oh, crap, now i got to remember the website. Nomads, the number nine. Stop it's laughing at it's me. It's a really weird website. <laughs> Nomads, the number nine, dot wix dot com slash nomad connection is our website. You can actually go on there, send us an email if you have questions about a particular topic, um, and send us emails or what have you. If you actually have a topic that you would like to, I guess I should probably put this on me since a question or a topic that you would, um, yes, please go back and watch the replay. Um, if you have a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd be happy to do that. So please send us an email. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's our website, nomads, the number nine dot wix dot com slash nomad connection. Um, most of us will see you in about another two weeks. Um, Jen will just randomly post her picture on the wall so that <laughs> post a random Jen and Mandish and Daniel picture on the wall so that they're still here with us um, as we bring in a few new nomads, hopefully. So um, thanks for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. I uh, have no idea what we'll talk about next, so please send us an email and we will probably consider that. And I'm going to turn it back around. So Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. We'll see you next time. Oh, wait, it helps if you do this to turn it off. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, this is not turning off. It doesn't want us to go away. There we go.